The question I get asked all the time uh, is what are the documents required to get a pre-qualification on a mortgage? Well, here I'm gonna show you what are the documents that are required. All the documents could vary depending on your situation, but these are gonna be the basic ones to start the pre-approval process. Here I'm going to share my screen. Great. Um, First of all, you're going to need uh, the past two years of tax returns. If you're looking to get a program like a first time home buyer down payment assistance program, you're going to need three years, the most recent three years. So when uh, your loan officer asks for your 1040 tax returns are going to look like this. This is an example of what the tax returns look like. Uh, it's usually two pages, but there are going to be schedules that come with your tax returns. If you're a W-2 employee that has a simple tax return, you probably only have two pages. But if you have other uh, income deductions, you're probably going to have more pages like the following one. We have a Schedule A, which has itemized deductions. It's one page. Then we have Schedule B, which is interest and ordinary dividends. Uh, then we have a profit and loss from a business. So this is if you get paid 1099 or you get paid cash, you're probably going to have this form, which is usually two pages. Uh, there's another one. It's called Schedule C E Z. Uh, if you don't get the other one, you're probably going to have this schedule, which is also two pages. Then you're going to have Schedule D, which is a capital gains and losses. That's another two pages. Also, if you have a rental property, uh, you have Schedule E. Here is where uh, the accountant notes any income or expenses on a properties that you, or any property that you may own. Then we have Earn Income Credit, Schedule EIC, which is two pages. Then we have Schedule 8812, which is credits for qualifying children or, or other dependents, okay? Um, then we'll get back to this one, but I want to show you a copy of the W-2. You're going to need um, your previous uh, two years of W-2s, which look like this. This is the form that you get from your employment in order to file um, your tax returns. Then if you are self-employed, let's say you work for Uber or Lyft or any um, other company that doesn't give you pay stubs, uh, you're going to get 1099s, which look like this. Um, they're 1099s miscellaneous. You're going to need the previous two years of this. Now, if you get uh, paid with pay stubs, you are a W-2 employee, then you're going to have pay stubs. They could be uh, different. Uh, we have here different examples of pay stubs. But you have to make sure your pay stub has uh, the time, um, sorry, the period, beginning date, and end date. It also has to have the year-to-date earnings. Um, you know, it has to show your hourly rate and how many hours you've worked. Uh, it also has to have all the information from the employer and your personal information. And if you... Get paid every two weeks, you're going to need uh, three pay stubs. If you get paid weekly, you're going to need four to five pay stubs. If you get paid monthly, you're going to need one pay stub. And if you get paid twice a month, you're going to need two pay stubs. So it's going to vary depending on how and how often you get paid. Now, if you're a business owner and you file your taxes or for your company, it's a U.S. corporation then you're going to have this form, which is called the 1120 form. So you're going to need your personal tax returns and uh, this forms as well. This returns for your business. And it is uh, several pages, about six pages. So now if you have this form, you probably get a K-1 form, which looks like this. This is a K-1 from 1120. Okay, this shows... Um, if you got any money out of the company and the allocation percentage for the year. Now, if you have a partnership, you're going to have a 1065. So you're going to need the previous two years as well for the business, either the 1065 or the 1120. So this one has about five pages. You're going to need every single page. And you're also going to need uh, your K-1 form if you get one from the partnership. 
Um, now, you're also going to need the previous two months of your bank statements. So the most recent two months, and that's going to be your checking, savings, uh, 401k accounts, uh, any uh, brokerage accounts that you may have, um, IRA, you're going to need the preview, the most recent two months. So make sure you get every single page and they're going to look like this. If you see that your statement says page one to eight, make sure you get every single page because we need to see everything. Even if the last pages have barely any information, the underwriter is going to want to see every single page. Now, if you have had a divorce here in the U.S., you're going to need your divorce documents as well. Um, if you receive or pay child support, you will need the child support documentation as well. So these are the basic documents um, for uh, anybody that wants to get a pre-qualification going. But uh, there, might need, there might be extra documentation required depending on your specific situation. So if you have any questions about what documents are required for your specific situation, make sure you contact your loan officer.